DC today, this Tuesday, March the 26th. It's great to be with you. We uh, had most mostly a, a, a fairly sideways day in markets. The market was positive for most of the day. We ended up closing slightly negative. We were down about 30 points, a little more on the Dow. Uh, interest rates uh, were down two basis points on 10s to 423. So fairly quiet day um, in in uh, in markets, and I have some comments in there on some historical data, and then I think in David does as well in his section. So let me let me tie those two pieces together. Um, so so this is the tenth time since 1950 that we've had five months in a row of, of positive uh, of positive markets. And um, what I did is just looked at in history when that did happen. Again, I mean, ten times is quite a quite a few, really, um, even though it's over 70 years. Um, were markets positive or negative a year later than that? And this does not mean that, that it'll be the case this time, but in every case, it, they were positive. And so there's something to be said about some momentum, and that's what we're what we're seeing now. That said, there's a real valuation issue that we're talking about, and David alluded to, alludes to this very nicely in his piece, which is if you assume an 11% growth rate for this year, and then what is estimated now for next year at 13%, you're still trading at 21.4 times now and 19 times for next year's. And that that's including uh, or assuming that markets will stay the same, you know, meaning they won't go any higher. So look, uh, historically, the numbers aren't necessarily against us um, uh, as far as market returns, we're, you know, considering where we are. But just keep in mind, the valuations are are pretty stretched here at this point uh, at this point. Um, <clears throat> There is um, uh, some other parts of the market that I think are fairly encouraging. You, you are seeing, and I talked about this on on um, either CNBC or Bloomberg, I forgot. But the, the um, there is there is broadening happening in the market. It's not it's moving from just tech into some other sectors, and energy is one of those sectors. And right now, there is now eighty percent of the energy sector trading above its three month high, um, and so that's generally seen as is fairly positive. And again, energy. Was so tough for so long, you know, fifteen and sixteen, and then so forth, uh, with over over investment, and and th those numbers are still being worked through. But generally speaking, it's good to see some broadening out in in uh, in overall markets. Um, we had durable goods orders out today that were better than expected. They were up one point four percent, which is quite a bit better, really, um, than the one percent expected. But just keep in mind for January. There was kind of an anomaly in there with with a large seasonal factor with Boeing airline contract orders, and so those numbers are a little skewed there, but generally still a positive number. Um, we had Case Shiller Home Price Index for the day um, up. I'm sorry for the month up 0.1 percent for January, and is now up 6.6 percent .6 year over year. So continued strength in housing, and I've written about it a few different times. Um, there's really not much transactions occurring right now, and so prices are staying where they are until there's more transactions. I suspect that'll come at some point. Um, we had consumer sentiment numbers out today that were a little weaker. Um, there's a little election coming out this year. I think that you know causes people to answer the survey results uh, a little more negatively. There's just some other things happening in in uh, in the world. Uh, again, the two comments that I make is number one, just keep in mind, this is a household survey. So they're calling people and asking them questions about how they feel about things. So it's it's basically a lagging indicator because it's how you just felt about something that just went on and not necessarily indicative of exactly what the future will hold. But then nonetheless, those are the two uh, or three sort of data points on the day from an economic standpoint. I answered a question that I get often um, about what our account minimum size is, um, which is that we try not to set one. You know, the, there's and this is in the Ask Brian section. Um, you know, I mean, pragmatically, is there a dollar amount where it wouldn't make sense to work with us? Of course. But my point is just, you know, we have 50, 100 million dollar clients that aren't good fits that that we turn down sometimes. And that has to that has to happen because of a lot of different reasons. And it's just not a good fit. And we have one, two million dollar clients that are a great fit and we can add a ton of value to. And there's 63 people on our team that can help with the with these people and uh, improve their lives. So there isn't a hard minimum. I really want TBG to be looked at as that quarterback position, though. Um, what I want to get away from 
or I think what was um, where the question was coming from is how much do we need to put in the dividend portfolio? And I just wouldn't look at it, uh, look at us as just an investment manager at all. It must, it's much more holistic than that. So as far as dollar amount, uh, it matters a little less. All that to say, you know, tomorrow there is a Fed speaker talking, uh, Waller. Other than that, it's a fairly quiet day in the economic calendar. I'll still be with you and there'll be plenty to go through in DC today, but um, not a lot actually scheduled. So for that, uh, uh, for now, I'm going to let you go for the day. I appreciate you listening. I look forward to being back with you tomorrow. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.